months ago that uh, Secretary Sebelius was before this committee and was asked specifically uh, if any person wishing to challenge an IPAB decision would be able to do so through the courts. Uh, and she stated, and I quote, our general counsel feels very strongly on this matter that they would be able to. But when you look at Section 3403 of the Affordable Care Act, it stipulates, and I quote from that section, there shall be no administrative or judicial review. Now, of course, uh, the American people had the opportunity last November uh, to go to the ballot box uh, and, and make a decision. Uh, and that's why um, many of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle were turned out, uh, turned out of office because of that. Uh, and that but but this, this leaving that IPAB in there really gives seniors who are denied care because it's too costly uh, or they're too old, uh, they have absolutely no recourse uh, in regard to IPAB. So um, when my colleagues say that, uh, oh, it's just another attack on Obamacare, it reminds me of the debate on on the partial birth abortion bill, which they were opposed to because of a fear of a domino effect on Roe v. Wade, even though that provision in the law was an abomination. I'm not saying abomination, abomination. So that logic clearly uh, will not hold water here. Let's repeal this abomination of IPAB, and I yield back. Chair, thanks, gentlemen. Recognize gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Latta, for one minute for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding the markup today on H.R. 452, the Medicare Decisions Accountability Act of 2011, of which I am a co-sponsor.